Okay, I'm glad that, uh, that we actually got the, uh, the book giveaway given because nothing warms up a room like a giveaway with no giveaways. Uh, um, okay, so my name is Jesse Walgamot and I work in Houston, but really I'm just a developer um, uh, for Chai One. And I like to, to say that I'm the Team America uh, lead developer there. Uh, that's from my son, he's about two. And July uh, 4th happened with the, the fireworks, and he just kept yelling out, America, you know, instead of America. And so instead of the U.S. lead developer, I'm, I like to say that I'm the Team America lead developer. Uh, the the NoSQL stars that we'll talk about today. Um, CouchDB, which is uh, created and then was included in the Apache system, uh, 2007. MongoDB, new kid. Uh, although not the newest, um, in 2009. SimpleDB from Amazon in 2007, and RavenDB um, by, by Allende uh, this year. Um, okay, so there is an evil nugget of information about the, the NoSQL systems, and that's that they all share an internal structure that was inspired by Lotus Notes. But I don't think that that means that we should all run s screaming from them, because um, there seems like there's some interest. Uh, in fact, uh, who here has programmed um, and connected to MongoDB? Awesome. What about CouchDB? Cool. Uh, what about both of them? Nice. Okay. Um, and then finally, anybody use uh, Amazon SimpleDB? Yeah, nice. And then uh, RavenDB? I'm expecting very little, but anybody use it at all yet? Okay. So how can we determine what's the best to use? Uh, and I'll go ahead and say subjectively that, uh, that there is no one right answer. Um, I think that it all depends on, on what you want to get done with it. But what I want to do with this talk is, is, is go over how they're different, and then that may influence what you want to use. So we'll talk about the languages that they're each written in and the API, and maybe why that matters. Uh, if there's versioning, how queries are done, and inserts, and then any intangibles. So MongoDB is the cool kid nowadays. So it's new, and I think that uh, any time that you have a video written about you, um, that, that, that you have achieved a, 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 a status of fame. So, and if you don't know what this is, um, I just saw it this morning, and it's uh, Mongo is web scaled, and it's pretty cool. Okay, so the APIs themselves, CouchDB, uh, the API that you talk to it is, is a full REST API, um, and it was written in, or is written in Erlang. Um, MongoDB is C++, and each connections to it is language dependent. Uh, RavenDB is a .NET uh, system and it runs on Windows and has both a .NET API and a REST API. And SimpleDB is written in Erlang, and it's it, it's a name value store, and it's it has a SOAP interface and a REST, what I'm going to call a REST unlike API. Okay, so w what's on here isn't truly Im important, but it, it's just a, so so the CouchDB. You, you connect to it through, through you're just posting JSON, you're getting it via an ID, and, and, and then you're going to get JSON back. Um, we would likely use it in, in a Rails project using a, a wrapper around the, the JSON. Um, and one that's out there that's pretty good, it's, it's Couch Potato. And so you can see that, uh, that you include a set of methods, and then you declare on it your, your properties. So, this one declares property, and then later on, if you want to create it, you actually say, you connect to the database, and you say, couchpotato.database, uh, save document, and then the, the user. So it's a little bit of a different syntax that you're using as compared to your general .save.create. Uh, in MongoDB, um, it, it, it's, it's much the same. So, so there are two main kind of conflicting class uh, um, libraries right now. Mongoid and Mongo Mapper, um, and, and they all share very similar syntax, where you still include 
uh, methods, whether it's the MongoDB document or the, the embedded document, and then you either say that it's a field uh, or a key, um, and, and at the very end, you say that, that you want to create on the, on, the, on the class name itself and pass it in your, your, your variables. So which do you use, Mon Mongo Mapper or Mongoid? Uh, Mongo Mapper is definitely easier to get into. Um, so Mongoid uses Active Model, uh, which is Rails 3 and, and the new hotness. Mongo, wait, I don't know what I said, but Mongo, Mongoid uses Active Model. Mongo Mapper is more like Rails 2, so it's just a class that uses validatable. Uh, but on the plus side, Mongo Mapper has better valid or um, association. So you can say school.students. And, and just walk the tree very easily. Mongoid, you can't, so you have to wrap that. You have to do that yourself. Um, Mongoid uses Errol for, for your queries. Mongo Mapper just released a, a domain specific language to, to build all, all, all of your where clauses. That's, it's pretty nice. Uh, one of the, the, the last two, though, I think are the, the, the most important reasons. Uh, Mongo Mapper is more familiar uh, for Active Record, for, for better and worse. Um, but it's also easier to get into. So I think you could drop a Rails developer down into a project that is using Mongo Mapper, and that they can get through it. They can, they can know what's going on and, and, and be productive in it. Um, Mongoid, I think it takes a little bit more research. Um, but Mongoid has a declarative master slave. Like you can say that this query is OK to go out and ask the, 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 the slave databases. Um, for, for their information, or no, I have to be on the, the master, which I think is fairly interesting. Um, on to RavenDB. So it's, it's your general put, get, and it's just JSON. Um, and then you also, down at the bottom, is, is some link code <laughs> that, that probably at least half of you can, can can read and, and not want to write. Um, but it's there, and so it's, it's set up to, to easily get into link. And in fact, when you do your querying and your map reducing, all of your indexes are defined as, as link queries. This is uh, Amazon SimpleDB, um, and I claim it is not RESTful. So this, uh, so this is a, a put request, and you can see up there that, that it's and action equals put attributes, and, and you set all your attributes. So it's attributes and values, um, and then those are each stored, and, and you query them later on. And, and I'm not going to spend too much time on, on simple DB throughout the whole talk, so uh, I think you can guess how it, how it rates on our scoreboard in the end. Um, but I, I don't like this, but it does get the job done. And so you can build things that easily store uh, with Amazon and get them back later. Okay, so our scoreboard for APIs. Um, CouchDB gets a star. RavenDB gets a star. And MongoDB gets a star. There's no star for SDB. Um, versioning. S probably too small of text. I apologize for that. Um, but we'll, we'll get through it. So CouchDB has versioning baked in, but really it's MVCC, multi-version concurrency control. Uh, so it's, it's not really versioning. While it stores versions of documents uh, upon each other, only the most recent is sent if you're doing replication. So it, you're not going to have all of the versions. You can't count on it to, to track your versions. You can count on it to um, be able to bring people up to date. So this is really good for offline databases, syncing and bringing back to uh, when they come back online. But it's not good for being able to track your, your blog comments or your blog versions of, of, of everything. So this is good in, in multi-master uh, uh, as well. So Mongoid um, ha has, a, has a nice versioning where, where you can include a versioning model and RavenDB has, has versioning built in as well. So for CouchDB and Mongo Mapper, you're generally right, uh, rolling your own, uh, which in a, in a document, it's not as hard as, 
uh, as you might think, right? So you can just say that a document has many versions of that document, and each time you update it, take the copy and save it inside itself. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think that that's as big of a deal as possible, but having it just baked in is, is nice. So RavenDB has it, has it baked in. This, it, this is the, um, the configuration where you tell it, uh, obviously in, the, in a .NET system, where you tell it that you want to store, I think here is 50 max revisions. Um, on the Mongoid side, you do the same thing, where you say, I want to include versioning. And then you say that the max version over there is five. So uh, for versionings, Raven gets one. And uh, I don't think I gave Mongo one here, um, but I probably should have. OK, so queries. CouchDB, uh, every query is a JavaScript map reduce um, implementation, which is pretty cool, I think. So the the cool part about it is that all of your all of your databases, right? They all have all of these different, or all of your documents have all of these different collections of attributes. And so when when you say, hey, give me this information. Uh, it does a map reduce to say, okay, what functions do I need to do uh, to, to, to collect, to, to decide if I should include this document in the collection, and then optionally reduce it down, uh, you know, do a sum or a reduce or, or whatever you want to do on it. So as CouchDB has, you've got your, your documents, and then you also have these special documents called design documents. And that's where you actually declare which views you want. So you declare that if you want to be able to get all of your documents, you need to have an all model, or an all view, um, or by last name, or total purchases that up here does a, a map and then a reduce. So the cool part is that once, once that's done, once you've been able to do a map reduce, and you're getting your data by something that you've indexed on, it, it's, it's, it's fast. But what's not hot about it is you have to declare, or pre-declare, all of your views. Um, so this flies right in, in the face of something in Rails that we take for granted a lot, but it's find all by and then that name or passing your conditions or, or doing all of, these, all of these queries. You don't get that, and, and you can't do it, other than an ad hoc query, which is pretty slow. Um, but, and I'll, and I'll say this with, uh, with the MapReduce and, and Couch, if, if you set it up with, with multiple servers that are, that are talking to each other, and so they're, they're either in a, they're in a replicated fashion. Um, MapReduce there is, is pretty cool. MongoDB. Um, MongoDB has dynamic query, so it, it does not, um, you don't have to pre-declare your views like you do in, in CouchDB. Uh, it does have MapReduce, but as I learned today from Scott, it's not concurrent. Uh, which means that it's a single thread that goes through all of your, um, all of your documents in a, in a linear fashion. So it would be cooler if it did take your 100,000 documents, split them up into arrays of 10,000, and, and, and process them all um, separately, and then reduce the, the, the result. But it doesn't do that, at least not yet. And uh, I included a, an example here that, again, too small. That's very bad. Uh, Keynoting, but it's just basically saying like event dot where the school ID equals a past in school ID, and then it it makes use of some scopes so dot publish dot future, and then it sorts it and limits by twenty characters, and then uh, or twenty uh, items, and then says dot all. So being able to chain together conditions and scopes, all of that just works the way that it does in in, in Rails three. Simple DB querying. There's no sorting. Which I think's a little bit lame. Um, you can do things like equal, not equal, less than, greater than, equal to, um, and then I included here just in the the right aid or the right Amazon Web Service gem how it does it. So you do querying based on uh, intersections of attributes. So if you imagine that you've got uh, documents and they all have attributes on them, you're looking for documents that intersect each of them. So the, the downside is that it returns XML, and then you have to parse the XML. You 
have a maximum of five seconds before it will likely time out. Um, and, and it's eh. RavenDB. This is, I think, one of the one of the cooler things. So RavenDB indexes are MapReduce, just like CouchDB, but they process them in the background. Um, so even as you, you are inserting records into Raven, you don't have to wait for, you don't pay the index cost when, whenever you're inserting into Raven. So it takes it, it says thank you, and then processes the index in the background, um, and then your results are stored to disk, and then those results are then, then passed back. Um, downside of this is that your results are eventually consistent uh, that we hear a lot about in, in, in cloud services. But, but especially here is that if I insert a record, I request, request, request that record right back, uh, it, like, well, it may not have the changes that I just sent in. So you have to, you have to be okay with that uh, or specifically tell Raven, um, don't, don't, just, don't just get the nice query you know, do the calculations for me. Um, get, get the absolute most current version. Uh, okay, so back to our scoreboard. CouchDB star, MongoDB star. It's a sad day for SDB and RavenDB star. Uh, okay, so on to inserting records. Um, okay, so, so CouchDB, um, I think that the API is pretty cool. Uh, is it's, but having to, to recalculate the MapReduce uh, is not cool and slows down over time. And so we'll see, we'll see that inserting records into, into CouchDB, um, it's, it's not necessarily a problem if you're okay with it, but it's slower. Um, Mongo, inserts, they update in place, which is fast, but but what I mean by updates in place, right? So, so you've, it, it's in memory, it, the, the updates come in, it makes the change to the object in memory and returns to you and says, okay, I've taken your change. Um, and then it does the change uh, to, to disk a little bit after that. So the problem comes in when the power turns out, off before those changes are written to disk, um, that change will go away. Uh, I don't think this is a good thing, uh, but I think it's something that if you're okay with it, I think, it, I think it's pretty good. In the, in the vast majority of cases of software that we write, this is okay. Yes? Nice. Or can, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think, I think that's awesome. Oh. Uh, 1.6 actually also added in um, some auto sharding stuff uh, and, and is, is pretty cool. So didn't know about that. Thank you. Um, that's good. Use that. Um, and in, in the next time I give this talk, this will be different. Okay. So some math. Um, so, so I took this from, from this thing, this... Uh, this blog that I found, and, and, and it, it, the, the numbers look good, and, and, and what I found was, was similar, um, but this is pretty dramatic. And so this is the number, on the left, the, the number of seconds that each of, if you're doing the, the inserts in the bottom, actually takes. So MongoDB, uh, which, which is the nice, nicer of the curve, um, vastly outperforms the, the CouchDB install. Do you think that um, it has changed since then? I, I have no idea, but I do believe that you know, with the software evolves very quickly, I suspect the couch TV guys care a lot about that performance for a long time. And my subjective experience is that couch TV is a lot faster for Durban than Durban was for Durban guys. I respect that. I saw. Um, in, in the loading of some data that, that, that we'll look at in a second, 
um, a five times difference, which obviously is not this graph, um, but, uh, but a five times slower in loading of CouchDB than MongoDB. But I, I, I like CouchDB. Um, but from what I've seen, it's, and I think it's a connection issue. Yes? Yeah, I, I, I can absolutely see that, right? Um, because, I, you know, even in mine, uh, where I was inserting 24,000 baseball game records, um, it was one, one insert per, uh, one connection per. Uh, and, and so I think that sheer connection time issues start taking, taking effect. Um, so cool. So I'm, I'm going to give to Mongo and Raven the, the stars here. OK, so we come to, to extras. Um, I think that, that MongoDB has the best Ruby integration. Um, that SimpleDB uh, has easy scalability that you don't have to worry about. Uh, RavenDB runs on Windows, and I think that's a downer. Um, they, uh, they use. Hey, Andy's talking about, about porting to Mongo. Uh, yeah, yeah. For sure, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that the, he'd said that the biggest problem there was that they use a, the enterprise storage block right? that, uh, that Exchange uses to, to store large data. Um, and so they're going to have to basically rewrite that uh, or a different version. Sorry? <laughs> right. Um, also, RavenDB, uh, as of what I checked, is a commercial license for non-open source that I think is a downer -er. Um But I don't think that we should discount it just because of that. I think that they're doing some really novel things. Um, and so that's why I, I include them here in, in, in a talk. Uh, CouchDB has multi-multi-master that I think is, is really cool. Uh, and offline, offline replication that I think is really cool too. Um, both of them uh, you can get started with. Uh, so there are free levels on Heroku. Um, that, that you can just get started with and, and start using and, and playing around with. Um, and it's actually really simple to get running on your, on your Mac as well. So for the extras, oh wait, I think, no, this, oh yeah, no, that's right. So, so the, the SDB, um, it's simple scalability and kind of it's free layer. Uh, free tier gave, gave it a star. I know, right? Um, RavenDB, n not quite with, with the extras. So um, as it stands, uh, I, I think that um, Mongo, Raven, uh, but, but I, I'd probably go Mongo. Uh, but CouchDB is, is more established. It's there. It's respectable. I like it a lot. OK, so what I was talking about earlier is, is I was trying to come up with something to show. Um, and so I found um, from 2000 to 2009, every game data and, and, ju and just loaded it in. Um, and so there's about 24,000 games um, in that decade. And in Mongo, it took uh, 77 seconds. And in CouchDB, it took 355. Um, so. It's entirely subjective, but I did experience it. OK. We have a couple minutes. Um, so what I wanted to, what, what's sort of interesting is, is you're able to, to have you know, any Rails project talk to both. So, so this Rails project just talks to. Uh, I, I've got the idea of a Mongo game and the idea of a couch game, um, and, and we can do a little bit of querying on it. But I wanted to show, here's the, the couch explorer in, in which we have a bunch of documents. Uh, we've created the documents, but we have not accessed the views yet. So in our views, and we're looking at our design documents, they aren't there. But as we look at any one of these, 
we can see um, that this was Tampa Bay and or to be announced. Nice uh, versus Kansas City. Um, and if we want to just do something as simple as uh, if we're going to ask the Mongo, so we've got Mongo game and, and Couch game, and so we want to see how many records. Um, so Mongo game dot count, and then we can we can do things like dot where the um, home team is Houston um, dot count, and we can get that. So if if we want to do much the same Couch game, and and so over on Couch, we have to. Uh, Pre-declare our views, so we've got a view named all by visitor and by home. Um, and so if we want to do a little, it, it, it's hard to call it a benchmark, but, but just I want, I want to run this query twice and then we're about out of time, but, but we'll run this query twice and show you the difference between a, when, when you have to load and create the indexes versus, versus when you don't. So right now, the by visitor index does not exist. And so when we tell it to access it, um, it's going to take about 30 seconds um, to, to go through all 24,000 documents and, and build its index. Um, so while it's doing that, Good demo, right? Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm coming off as a couch hater, and, and, and I'm not, but I just want to show like the true difference. So that, so that took 26 seconds for it to, to, to go through and build it. You ask for it again. Sorry? You're a simple DB hater. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely true. I, I will wear that hat. OK, so the first time that we, that we asked it, it took, uh, that, does this work? Yeah, so 26 seconds. Um, and then the second time, 2.8 seconds. So what was going on there? Well, we saw here that design documents, it didn't have anything. And so now it does have one called by visitor. And we can look at it. And I've told it to, to reduce. But if we don't, then we're able to come in and see all, all of our games. So. Once we've built the index, it's actually very fast to query data on it if you're using the index. Um, but it takes a while to, to generate it. Now, this doesn't mean that if I um, insert a new record, it would have to rebuild the entire thing. Uh, that, that's not the way it works. But there is startup time involved with Couch. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It does. Uh, well, maintain. Uh, you mean it, like it's actually persisted, right? Or it, it's there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, this implementation, uh, the the couch game where you include couch potato persistence. Um, I, I've declared four views here, um, where one by visitor, by home, and then if we wanted to see all the times that Houston and Cincinnati played, um, we could do that. Uh, so it is not creating the views until you actually use them. Um, in earlier Rails couch versions, you'd have to do this, and then you'd have to run a command that actually created all of, all of your, your design documents. Um, so I, I like this one better, but you, you do run into why did this, you know, that there exists a condition where if you just went live, why did this page take 26 seconds to load? Well, it could have been building the, the index. Is the include a capacity kind of facility to warm up the indexes? I haven't seen it. They may. Just do it. And then it's almost um, where, where if you deployed, you could then just say and call it, right? Call each of your indexes. Uh, as far as automating it, um, I haven't seen it. It may exist, but uh, you maybe. I think it's. I think that'd be a good practice, so that your users aren't the first to to.
kind of get screwed over for, for a new index. What else? Any other questions? Uh, does anyone agree with my, um, <laughs> my, my sort of loving on, on MongoDB? No one? Yes, thank you. Um, okay, so I think, I think I will wrap it up. Thank you very much.